My name is Matt McDonald, and I'm designer of our tool here, Access Game Factory. Currently, in order to um, move the camera around as I'm doing here, you want to hold down the Alt button, and I'm using my right mouse button to zoom in and out. I can also use my middle roller on my mouse to zoom in and out. By holding the middle mouse button and the Alt button, I can translate the environment. By holding the left mouse button and the Alt button, I can rotate the environment. Right clicking anywhere on the screen, I can bring up the radial menu. This is the radial menu. And as you hover over the different buttons, you can see different options popping up. A lot of these features are actually on the toolbar that is at the left hand side and this is scrollable. You can see there's a lot of these functions here. All these little windows are draggable. You can drag them out into your area and organize them any way you like. You can delete them from your screen if you like and you can also reorder them in any fashion you'd like to by just dragging them over the side and they automatically dock themselves. If you happen to close a button and you'd like it to open back up just right click go to windows and then we just close the terrain menu so I can bring that back up by just selecting terrain and I can put that back onto the side. We've uh, set up the software now so that you can change the quality levels up and down while you're still in the tool. I'm going to get into showing you some of the uh, ways that you can create assets while you're in the tool. I'm going to dock this over here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to the build area and first thing you notice here is there's obviously a grid. The grid's very important to the way we build things. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to warehouse. Open up my warehouse window. My warehouse is also a draggable scalable window it has an object preview button and that will show whatever object is currently at your tooltip and you can see as I roll my mouse button it changes from the two objects that are in that container artillery now if I click on there you can see there's other options available I'll go to fantasy and you can see that there's different building parts that are available to use in my creations. The same manner now that I'm in the fantasy container I can roll my mouse and go to the different objects that are in that container. I can also rotate those objects as I would like 45 degrees each rotation using the R button or shift R I can free rotate objects or control R I can reset the objects rotation. Now you don't have to use the drop down menu to pick different assets from the warehouse by using the number one button it goes to the next container up you can see there's some castle parts in there and I can also use the four button to go to the next container down now when you're in any given container you can use the two and three buttons also to choose a different object so let's build a simple house so I've got a little uh, cube with a door on it the doors currently the other direction so we're gonna use our WASD keys we can rotate in build mode. That's another way that you can navigate um, your view as well as the the alt and mouse buttons that I went over earlier. We're gonna make a little house so we'll put the doorway here. I'll float my object on top and you can see right from the get-go that there's a very low tolerance how objects snap to one another because our grid is set very low. Our grid is currently set to be 0.25 meters in scale so you have each movement of the object it'll move 0.25 you can see it's snapping now depending on what scale the objects are that you're using you might like that size of uh, the grid you might not I'm going to show you how to adjust your grid so that things snap together more easily this is my grid editor I can actually change the size of my grid using the um, buttons here as well as the snap values that's at what point the object snaps to the grid itself and the objects have an anchor built into them at the bottom center so let's set this at two and you can see that now that object fits there nice and neat I'm going to drag this back to my dock I'm going to roll my middle mouse button and get the uh, object with the door and there it is click I'm going to place the object on top. Did you notice that when I placed an object that the camera automatically follows my 
cursor. So it, it's automatically centering you, the camera to where you are working. And it does that all over in both the build and design mode of the tool. So I'm rolling my mouse button. I'm going to place another cube with a roof on top of there. I'm going to roll my mouse button again until I get the object that is desired and that'll work. Place my lower level there. You can see how my house is coming together. I don't like how that's fitting on that side so I can just move it over a bit more. You can see how that fits up nice and neat and centered. I'm going to float it on top again and you can see that it snaps automatically and then there's my roof. Now I can either place a roof there now and that's the size of my house and let's go ahead and save that. File save. We're going to name this A House 1. We're going to save that file. And it's just saved that. And now if I go to my custom directory, you'll see now there's a an icon made for it and there's the house we just saved. Now I can undo that last object that I put there and I can make a variation on that house. I'm going to go back to my fantasy container and I'm going to roll through and I'm going to make a variation of this house that has a second floor. I'm going to place that there. Now maybe I want to add on to this house with some other building structures. I can roll around and say for instance I can place this here. I can place that there. And maybe I want to put a window sticking out of the top roof. Now you can see that it doesn't want to place it intersect this object with the roof. Now that's because it's using real-time collision detection finding the angle of that roof. In order to place it at that height I just find the height I want to place it at which is there. I'm going to hit the tab button and now the grid is snapped to that height of the roof. Now by also holding shift I can actually penetrate that object through the roof and now it's just sliding on the grid. Now our grid setting is too high to allow it to be placed accurately so we're gonna go to our grid menu lower that. Now I can adjust my snap value either this way with the slider or I can also use my greater than and less than keys to interactively scale that grid until it gets to be the size that I want it to be so that these objects fit together nice and neat. I can also simultaneously move my grid up and down using the V and B buttons and that's nudging the grid. Now if you look at the grid editor there's a nudge amount and it's currently moving at 0.25. If you want it to move at greater increments then you just raise that number and now you can see each tap moves it as, at a higher increment. For this here, I want to have it as low as possible, and 0.25 is that number. And then we'll place that there. So there's a variation of the first house we made, and now we're going to save this one as a different object. So I'm going to save this as house 2. Save. Now, I'm going to end the video here for the moment, and the next video I'll show you how to bring these houses into your environment and place them and we're going to build a village.